M0FXB, welcome to my channel. UVK6, this one with the yellow screen has that nice metal bezel. I just, it's, it's my probably my favorite one. I have a few of these UV5s here, but UV5, UV6, you know, they all, they're all pretty much the same. You need to decide which firmware you'd like to use. The original I'm using today, I'm using the Exuma firmware version 21. The question I had was, can you just use it in the normal way instead of teaching how to use all the functions? Could you just use it as you would day to day? So that's what I'm gonna do. Because I'm inside the shack, I'm gonna connect an external antenna. So I do have an adapter here. I'll show you the one I use. And I'll put links for these, but they're very inexpensive. SO239 to SMA. And I'll take off the, in my opinion, quite good antenna. If you go and stand on a hill, this antenna is gonna work fine for you. My experience is otherwise though, is the longer the antenna, the better it, it works. If you buy one of these like super duper telescopic type antennas and fully extend it, it's gonna work better than a, than a rubber duck. So, and you can buy these clones of these for about 10 pound. So, but obviously it's quite a, it's not as portable as using the rubber duck. So when using uh, when using your external antenna, I recommend the antennas I like to use for receive transmit are the collinear tri bands. Moonraker have got them. I show you them here. The, the photograph here, but one one radial will be longer for six meters. And on Moonraker's site, that's the when it comes in pieces. But it's quite a big antenna, but it will last you literally forever, and it's it's will transmit two meters seventy and uh, six meters and it works fine on air band if you just want to receive then you just get yourself a disc cone type antenna if you just want to receive because that will cover you for several bands if you want to get you know some uh, some good usb lsb hf signals in my opinion you can't beat a long wire with a ballon and there's one here for example i use this one it works fine so it's the LW20DX. Okay, we've swapped antennas. We're on our external antenna now. First thing we'll do is go into VFO mode. So it says here, number three, VFO. Just hold it. That's channel mode, that's VFO mode. If you've got the, the version that hasn't changed the firmware, you will have to press the F first. But anyway, it says VFO. Now we'll external antenna connected vfo mode by holding down three let's just have a little scan the squelch is set to number three we can lower it a bit so we'll go menu it's on number 60 the squelch so if we go backwards 60 menu then we'll just lower it let's try one see if that what that's like press menu to select it then exit now we'll try scanning. Hold down the scan button. See if we have any luck going up. Going down. No luck there at the moment. Let's exit. Now we'll try airband, so we'll go, you do need to turn on the AM fix. So you go menu, 56. Just make sure that is on. To turn it on, you just select menu again, and then go down or up, you want it on. Okay, and then just exit. So we can now type in, say, one, two, five, zero, zero, zero. And then scan again, hold down the star, just scan it up. You can change direction by pushing the up and down arrow. See if we get anything. There you are. You got a scan. That was the, I think, the weather sort of information. Scan up and down. It's, it's don't forget, it's not perfect, but it's it's definitely usable. So that's 
air band. Let's see if it will receive marine band. So we'll press exit and we'll put in 150 megahertz for starters. Then we'll hold down scan. We'll let it scan up. Hopefully that's in FM. Now there is a, a selection to make sure that you're in the correct mode. Although I think it does say it there with the F3. Just let it scan. And now also you can change the steps. My steps there, what are they? They're in 25 steps. So you can change that if you want. Let's go up a bit. I think we're a bit low anyway. Let that scan for a minute. The marine bands in the UK is one five. Let's have a look here. One five seven to one six one. So there you are. So that's how you would scan those bands. Three four seven GMT. Area Irish Sea. Gale now ceased, but southeasterly gale force eight expected later. So there you are. Air band we've heard. Marine band we've heard. Now let's go to hand bands. So we'll exit that. Let's go to, let's try 430 meg. So we'll go 430. This is 430 megs. Hams use these kind of bands. So let's hold down scan. We'll let it scan up. See if we pick anything up. Now I recognize that frequency. That's actually like a, a DMR or D-star type hotspot frequency. It'll keep going up. Hold the scan again. There are settings where you can tell it what to do when it finds something, but we're keeping this nice and basic. So if you ever thought about getting your ham license, you can do it all online now. We'll give that one a go. It's well worth it. I'll put a link into the RSGB. So we're just looking at the, the ham bands that are on the RSGB, say 430 to 440, but different sections of that band are used for different reasons. Um, so yeah, happy new year to you, Kev. Uh, I won't help. That's um, what we call, um, that's my hub net. No, that's actually coming from this room. It's a bit off frequency, but... 434550 is the actual frequency that I use, which you could type in if I want. But of course, I do it the long way. Uh, it will soon, Kev. Um, um, G6ZDP, make it short. Sure. And there is a, a, a gateway near me on 145212. We've got that one wrong, so 212. And it's just 1. Four, five, two, one, two. There you are. And that is the same thing, but but it's picking it up from Wales, uh, which is I don't know, ten miles from me. The antenna I'm using isn't great. It's okay, um, but it's a link on. It's called GB Seven SW, I think. And it has a tone of 94.8. So you do need CTS tone to open that up, which you program into the radio. And of course, this radio is works great on repeaters. So let's switch to my memory mode. We'll hold down the three. And now we're in memory mode. Now, I've got some random memories in here. Let's just go through them. We can scan the memories. We hold down scan here. And it will scan through memories. It's found that one straight away, the one that we were just listening to. Okay, uh, Kev, don't worry too much about it. Concentrate on getting yourself better, mate. Um, you know, that's what we all want to... interesting what that means. When I'm pushing the down, we're getting all these don't Cs. Coming back. But happy New Year to you and ever. And, uh, um, I, I don't even know what that is, but... Let's exit. Um, but happy New Year, mate. And, um, 
Else, uh, yeah, that was interesting. Right I turned it on and off, but um, and you can see that you can you can dual watch, so you can listen to the A and the B band, um, but only hear one at a time. But it will monitor both. Let's go down one. That's poor, poor my friend. It's chatting there. So let's just go down. Keep going through these. That's GB three WR. Let's do a test. M zero FXB calling for a test. M zero FXB. I don't think we're opening that up. Which is a shame. Mike Zero, Fox X-Ray Bravo, M0 FXB, am I being heard? You can see that the LED light goes red there. Could be on the wrong tone. So we go, let's have a look at the tone. We'll go menu. And we'll find the CTCSS tone. I'll just show you the step is on number number one there. One out of 60 menus. That was our squelch. TX Power's on number two. Some of them are on the front. Like, I'm pretty sure it's six on this, but anyway in the menu and we want the transmit ct css there it is there number six and it is on so we're not we're not making it so the antenna we've got isn't that great i've got two or three different antennas here we just flick through some of my that's gb3 wr gb3 bc tx disable not sure why oh because it, it thinks it's in am mode so let's find that menu there you go menu one three Demodulation is AM, we don't want that. Press M, M again, and then go FM, M. Okay, now let's give that a test. We're now in FM. Let's go M0 FXB, calling for an audio test. M0 FXB. So that, we're literally just making it. That's the Bristol channel, so we... We just opened that. Let's go back to WR because maybe that was on AM. Yeah, look, it is there. AM, that's what the problem was. So menu, like so, change it to FS. It's a lot easier with the software and you can use Chirp. So we've changed that back. Exit, let's give it a go. M0 FXB, calling for an audio check. M0 FXB. No, I'm surprised we're not making that. It's the right frequencies, the right shift, the right tone. Surprised we're not making that. I normally make that one quite easy. Let's go down. GB3FI, that's a local 70 centimetre ham one. Again, for some reason the memory has put them all to AM. How annoying is that? There you are. FM. Select. Exit. I'll do that again. Select. Then exit. Okay, now we're on FM. M0 FXB test. There you go. That, that was nice and near, very strong. 430925 GB3FI or GB3ZB on 825. And some of these repeaters are linked. You've got GB3FH and that's on six meters. Um, we could try that as well. I've never thought about testing this on six meters. I don't know if it, if it, will, uh, if it will do that. We will try, anyway. Someone there. M0 FXB, can I have an audio test? M0 FXB. FXT, yeah, audio is very, very thin. DW1 out Yeah, it's probably because I'm talking too far away. I'm just going to reply closer to the person. Good morning. The time is 11 o'clock a.m. Yeah, so when I so when I spoke closer, thanks seven three. When I spoke closer, it was fine. Yeah, okay. So that's GB three FI. It's a lot quicker to program the names using software, but with the new Exuma, it's not too bad programming names now with the new Exuma again. The reason I like the Exuma is because you can flash from browser. So basically, you put the put it into the you know this address into your browser, connect the cable, the twin pin Kenwood cable, and click go, and it just loads. And the way you put it in firmware mode is you turn it off, hold down the PTT, turn it on, and you are in firmware mode. How do you know? Because the torch lights up, and, and then once your cable's connected, then you just load it. It's it's it, don't be scared of the firmware. It's you won't brick the radio. And that's it. So only going down. Just flicking through a few more. 
Now that's it for now. We need to add some more favourites really. The just to show you the broadcast radio, you've got here, um, here the pretty sure it's the FM button. Hold it down and you go to broadcast radio. Yeah, that's radio one. And it, there's I think there's a scan here with the update. Sure there's a scan on that. Oh yeah, this button looks like it's turning the torch on. Oh, we've got so many buttons there. The bottom one, torch. Now you can set the buttons in the software and within the menus. There's also, you can set to listen to the input. If you just hold it, it turns off the squelch. Now I'll, I'll add the instructions from Exuma for this because even I forget, you know. There's so many buttons on this radio. But many many functions work from the front, from the two programmable buttons, the up down. You can even program the M button. Um, you know, it's just I just think they're really good devices. The firmware for me, I mean, they worked okay without the firmware, and I, I liked it. But really, once we could get better AM with the new firmware, that was quite a big change. Now some people they like to use these on USB. So the way you do that is you just go F then five. Then we go two set then we go and then, then press five. Go two seven star for dot then zero zero zero. M I think you press. And then to change the mode, because we're on FM here, press the zero. And we're now on the ham band. Now if I flick my antenna over, so I've got my ham antenna on there now. Let's try the squelch menu. Ah, oh, see the line. I got. Right. It's been a few days since I used it, but see there's a line there. I'm trying to get the focus good on this. The dotted line hold the F and it comes down that's like a squelch line there's something there isn't there well oh, we've jumped high there And the amount that we're jumping can be adjusted. Press the six. So again, I recommend you look at the instructions. I mean, it's, su it's such an advanced software. Press the PTT button, and then you've got these adjustments here as well. Okay, so I thought I'd just show you general day-to-day -day use. We've listened to air band, marine band, ham bands, broadcast radio, torch. You know, we've shown you that, 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 that this radio, even though you can buy them for under £20, is, ex, is an extensive, has no, has, I don't know, massive amount of functions. USB-C charging, twin pin Kenwood, you can even add a Bluetooth adapter there to program from your, from your smartphone. I think that some of the Bluetooth adapters now are actually allowing you to connect your headset as well and external speakers and items which, you know, it's pretty cool. And then, you know, to get the battery off, you can buy larger batteries for these now as well. Well, this one that's in it is quite good, 1600. It does last for ages, you know. And they do come in all shapes and colors and sizes. As you can see, I've got a bright orange one somewhere as well. And then different models, Retivis are now making them. You've got Rui. This is a Quan Chung, but with a black and white screen. And they're pretty much all the same. Most of them take the same firmware. You've got the UV5R style one as well. That, that's like a Bofeng, but they've put a blue screen on it. 
like this one here. So the colours and the style is is of a UV five R. You know, like here's a UV five R, and I still like my UV five R because it's a bit smaller. Yeah, and I'm used to use. I know where everything is on it. But look, they've tried to sort of copy the colours and style, but this really in my left hand is a, is a you know it's a koshang but with no usb c but what they've done to try and make up for that which is, i still think they should have added usb c they've given you a super battery which is quite good because you can actually fit this battery on the other ones just be careful charging it it will fit in the same charging dock but to make it fit in the koshang you have to break these tabs off see there's two tabs there you have to break them off but that's not it doesn't affect anything so thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Happy New Year, 7-3. Catch you on air. Bye for now. I'm Zero FXB. Welcome to my channel. Take a look here. So where did it all start? It started off with the UV5R, which we still have now, and I still love my one. This one's actually only a few months old. And it's just this this was the beginning really of of, of ham operators, shortwave listeners, hobby radio enthusiasts being able to access many, many bands inexpensively, and you can still get these for under £20. Then came along the Kushan K5, uh, when, when it first came out, in my opinion, it was a nice radio, but wasn't really talked about very much until people started added, adding firmware that allowed you to receive, and I, I, I'll say TX in exclamation marks, USB 2728 megahertz. That was when everyone started talking about it, and so, and then the then the price dropped drastically from thirty to thirty five pound to fifteen pound and less, and then everyone started buying these like hotcakes for Christmas twenty twenty three, and so we've got some different styles here, pretty much except for the Bofung. We'll put the Bofung there for now. Except for the Bofung, they're pretty much the same radio. All of these devices. I'm trying to keep a good focus here. Apart from the fact that people have been making firmware, the one I'm using is Exuma. The reason I like using the Exuma 21 version at the moment is because it's really easy to upgrade. You just use the browser. So what do I mean by that? Well, you just click the link that Exuma provides. It looks like this. And thank you very, very much to Exuma and Fadji for doing all this work because it has literally changed ham radio. You get this window, then you add your Retivis cable. You know, this, this style cable. Plug it into the side here. Firmware mode, you can actually do it with one hand, I think. You just turn the radio off. Off there, turn it on and look. You're in firmware mode, cable connected. Then you just click, flash with firmware. It, it, it automatically finds your comm connection via the USB and then away you go. And you know, I've just tested, I've just literally been testing one now, I've just posted the video on it. They work on air band, marine band, ham bands, USB 27, 28 megs, AM, FM, broadcast radio, built in torch. It's a nice design, you know. So to me, it's a no brainer. So I wonder which one you've got, which one you like. I've got a bright orange one somewhere in a box. So I need to dig out. You can use the the cradle charger, which is pretty much how I, I always use the cradle charger, or use the, the USB connections if you like on the Quashangs. I still rate the the Bofung, so I think there's a place for Bofung. But when they say, you know, I've heard the term quite a few times over the last year, Bofung killers, and I and I know it's quite an extreme way of saying it, but I think they're probably right in, in this case. So which one do you prefer? Yellow, blue, white, and this one's a white screen. Uh, there will be, because these are so popular, they're going to start making these in all colour screens and cases. And if I'm pretty sure that someone will use the same hardware but change it to a full colour screen. That's bound to happen. I can't see it happening on these screens because they're LCD type screens. You can have a, a boot up picture on this, but it won't be a, a photograph. It will just be a, the LCD. I think that's going to happen. Sorry that, that it's not very clear, but that's, that's the way it is when you're filming these radios. They're not the clearest radio to film. But thank you very much. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe, 73.